Hi everybody! Right, welcome to the curry cook along. Today we are joined joined by Darth Vader. Can you walk in you two and stand in there and Batman? We want food. We want food. This is what I have to put we up want with. Food here this now. is what I have to put up with. Mr. Vader, we want food. Child, here now. go away. Do you want food? Later on. Tell, tell, tell the cook. He's been so excited. What do you want to eat? Yeah. Uh, Hi, oh. Susanna. Hi, Sylvia. We will start cooking. We just wait for people to log on. Okay? Right, Bilal, you have to leave now, baby. I oh, shall see mom. you later. Okay, yeah. Bilal's got a special mug. Come on. Where's your mug? Right, okay. We're going to start with the hand washing stuff in a second oh, when Zeb takes over the phone. So please, can we join now? Okay, right. We'll stop. Can you take over? Right. Hello, everybody. We're going to do the hand washing. Happy birthday song. Twice, because that's what Mr. Johnson told us. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to whoever. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to me in two weeks' time. Happy birthday to you. Pause your tone deaf. Yes, it's true. <laughs> It is true. Right, okay, we're going to cover a lot today because we've got a curry to cover, two or three different types of naans and flatbreads and stuff like that, and even possibly some fillings. Now, those who are cooking along have been told to do the onions, get the onions ready for me. So we're just going to put that on low gas. Can you see the gas is very low? Just to start it going. Right. And I'm just going to pour some oil into it. Okay, just enough to cover it. There you go. So that was probably about 200 mils of oil. That's what I put in the measuring jug today. Right, every single curry, well, most curries, I'm not going to say every single curry. Most curries do have a very, very similar theme. So I'm starting off with my favourite bay leaves will go in. Two or three bay leaves. Cloves will go in. And again, there's about four, five cloves, four. Five cloves gone in. Okay, and then a cinnamon stick. Right. It's quite funny being filmed by Batman. Okay. I'm sure he'll give us a little wave later. No. Yes, you will. Okay. I'm so bossy. Right, so we've got a bit of cinnamon, we've got a bit of bay leaf, a bit of cloves, onion, and oil. Just sauteing away. Now, in the back gas, I have. This is for the filling for the paranta. Now, I know one person is definitely doing that. Not everybody's doing that, so this is extra. So it's got like four medium potatoes in there. I peeled and I chopped it down. And I'm just putting the gas on. Actually, I need to drain that water first. It's very cold water. So I'm going to add some kettle water to it to start that. But a lot of people aren't doing this, so this is just to watch and re reference back later on. Pre-boiled water. Yep. Yeah. And all we're going to be doing stuff like this, add a bit of salt to it, a bit of flavour. Okay, so that's salted potatoes. That's for the filling for the paranta later, so How don't worry about salt? that. How much I did about a level tablespoon there. Right, okay, so that's just on low gas. The reason I put it on, actually, I'll put it on medium gas. All just right, to people start are it. logging in, tell them what you've just done. Okay, so for those who've just started again, I'm going to go back to it again. So I put the onions in the pan. This is the cauliflower curry I've started because that's the longest thing. So we've got onions, we've got cinnamon, bay leaf, How many cloves. Onions? There's two onions, two medium sized onions, and I need to put some ginger in as well. Right, the next thing I'm gonna do is the naan dough. I know loads of people are asking me about the naan dough. Now, you know they are the best naans in the world. We know that, right? And the reason why they're the best naans in the world is because they freeze really, really well. So if you've got leftover naans, Make sure you let them cool down, lay them, cover them with foil, put them in the freezer, and you can take them out any time you want it. It is the best naans ever, and that's why they're so good. Okay, right. Let's just get this cooking slowly, and then I'll start doing the naan dough. So that's about a good inch or so of ginger in this. Right, I will add garlic in a minute as well, which I should have really prepped for this one. Oh, I am using 
This was given to me by a group of my friends in Spain. The curry pot spoon. It says, Fozy, you will be missed. Lots of love, Jess. But I know there's a group of us, a group of you girls that I hung around with. So I love a curry pot spoon. So that's on. That's for me news today. Okay. Susanna, Dawn, how's it getting on? Are you cook cooking okay? Have you got the onions on? Kimberly, have you started your cooking? Come on, guys, get on with it. Right, okay. That's on like a medium gas because obviously you can't wait all day for that to cook. Now we're going to move over here a little bit. So I've got this good side. I'm going to do the main non dough first with the yeast. Okay, this is what I think a lot of people want is this recipe first. Okay, so I have weighed there's about 800 grams of plain flour in it. You can use self raising flour, it just makes it lighter and fluffier, and that's absolutely fine. I have done it with self raising flour in the past, and that's fine, it works. Okay, side so I can stir. okay, so first thing I'm going to do is get some milk, it can be whole milk, and it can be it can be full fat or it can be semi skimmed. A nice mug of milk okay all right it's going in the microwave for a minute just to warm it up if you haven't got a microwave on a small little saucepan just start warming it up warm the milk okay now i'm going to do the other dough in a second without the yeast as well so don't worry right that's on so in this 800 gram flour so i'm going to add one egg and i love the eggs how many how many grams of flour 800 so are you watching the washing machine or the bowl Check. Oh. It's definitely in the bowl because it looks quite low. Uh, um. Okay, okay, right. Right, so now we need now a tablespoon of sugar. That sounds strange, but it activates the yeast. Okay? So it's about a tablespoon of sugar. You don't taste it, it's just to activate the yeast. Okay. Right. One tablespoon of sugar. So an egg, tablespoon of sugar. Now, probably about a teaspoon worth of salt. Okay? Right, that's for that one. Right, then we add... It's about four... The 125ml carton of yoghurt is fine. About four tablespoons here. What type of yoghurt? Plain yoghurt. It can be low fat, it can be full fat, it can be Greek yoghurt, it can be whatever you want it to be. I've just got low fat, my favourite yoghurt. So, and we need some oil. Right, so... What type of oil? So it's, I'm using vegetable oil, it can be sunflower oil, it can be olive oil, it can be any of the types, one. So four tablespoons, two. Yes, three. very bossy. Well, <laughs> who said that? Who said that? Who said that? I can't tell you. Oh, is that ourself? Probably ourself. Okay, right, I'm doing an extra thing, is I'm adding some... Um, Nigella seed to it. I can't remember if I wrote that on the list, but it just gives a really nice flavour. It's a lovely, gives a lovely flavour to bread. So it's about a tablespoon worth extra because I like, I like it. Right, okay. I'm gonna leave that there a second. Right, I've got my milk out the microwave. I'm gonna add. I did actually have yeast, so I'm gonna add a tablespoon. So of yeast to my milk. Okay. Right, leave that in there. Right, while that's frothing, okay, so I've been stirring the frying pan for me, which is nice. Okay, that's going well. Lovely. Okay, so we're going to do the next dough. So give that a couple of seconds. Oh, Actually, no, I won't. I'm going to just get this one dough out of the way first. So the yeast one first, okay? So it's got the sugar, a tablespoon, a teaspoon of salt, it's got an egg, four tablespoons of olive oil, about four tablespoons of yogurt. I put some nigella seeds in, that's optional, okay? And I'm going to do a mug of milk with some yeast, which will froth and which will cook quite nicely. I'm going to pour that in, all of that. I've kept the milk bottle there because I might need a bit extra. My hands are clean, I've washed up, okay? So now we're just going to knead it through. Okay. And it's got to be like a nice soft dough. Okay, so not a firm dough, which is why you might need to add some extra milk in a minute. I'm going to check in a minute how we go. Right, don't forget this non one, because everybody will want this. Make sure you save the video at the end and refer back to it whenever you want to. Okay. 
it's actually quite nice and soft so I don't need to add any more milk to it I might actually be adding a little bit of flour in a minute which I've got here extra flour to the side why just because it's very sticky on my hands that's the only reason why just make it a nice soft dough it's very soft it's not firm at all and if it's firm add a dot of milk just got to work it out okay Yeah, clean hands, Maz. Is that our Maz? Oh, yes. Tell him I've learned something today. Okay. The onions. Right, I'm going to go back to that second. Right, so, I'm just going to use, this sounds odd, because I've got milk inside it, I'm going to use a little dot of milk and tap it down. Okay? What consistency is the dough now? Right, look. It's very, it's soft. It's like a medium soft flour ball. Now you can spend a bit of time kneading it if you want to. We haven't got time for that today. Well, you don't really need to because the yeast will do the work, okay? Now, I know because we've got a very short time to find the warmest place you can think of. I'm going to put mine by the radiators. I'm just washing my hands whilst I'm stirring the pan. Let's pick up the pan. Just washing my hands. Right, okay, now, going back to this cling film, if your bolt is not very deep, it's very shallow, I would honestly put a little dot of oil on the cling film because it will rise and it will stick to it. Top tip. Okay, so make sure you put some oil on your cling film, if you've got a very shallow bowl especially. So, okay. cover the bowl. Right. I'm now going to go and put it by the radiator, okay? So you, you stir that, I'm literally going to put my bowl by the radiator. It won't rise as much as I'd like it in the, ne in the next hour, but we're going to get it as, as much as we can. How long do you usually leave it then? About two hours. I mean, I've done it in an hour, to be honest, before time as well. So let's go right by the radiator, which is not even on. Okay, right. I'm going to put the radiator on. Right, I'm going to put, okay, now the one with the plain flour. Now this is about four, 400 grams of plain flour. This is for people who haven't got yeast. Okay. Non-yeast recipe. This is a non-yeast one. Okay, so let's put that yeast away. Is, and if you haven't even got yogurt, it doesn't matter. It's just making sure. Put a bit of baking powder into it, which I forgot to open it up. Okay. If you've got an egg, we're going to put an egg into it. Anything to make it soft and yummy. Yeah, I've still got the suit on. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll turn the camera in a second. Um, so yeah. you've got about baking powder, so about a good teaspoon. So two teaspoons. I've got one and a half. I think slightly less than the first time. I'm gonna add a bit of bicarb cut by carb soda to make it fizz a bit more. There's only a little dot in here anyway. Okay, there's about level half a teaspoon. What are the two ingredients you've just used? Baking powder, mainly, and a little bit of bicarb soda. Okay. Pinch of salt, because you don't need a lot of salt. Susanna because. says, what if you've got no egg? Just, Susanna, I know you're on limited resources, so just use the milk today. Okay, go with that today. And then next time you'll learn, just add milk and add yogurt if you can, whenever you can. But go with that, whatever you can, whatever you've got, just work with today. Okay. Will it make a difference if you haven't used egg? Um, eggs make it softer and lighter, that's what it is. But I did say, if you can use self-raising flour, try using that. And I know you haven't even got yogurt in, so I'm going to omit all that. So even in this one, I probably put a yogurt or an egg in, but I know Susanna. So I just said, what's the difference between the powders? One is baking powder. And oh, what does it normally do? I'm going, you're going to have to Google that, love. That's what you have to do. What difference does it make to it? There is a difference. One is a rising agent and one is soda, which is like, I'm like why did you have to ask me difficult questions? You could have told me this before. Uh, baking soda <laughs> will make CO2 in there. Yeah. Thank so you, the, Zed. The, no, gases, Zed will tell you. the gases will help it rise. Right, milk. Again, we're going to use a little bit of milk. Okay? Warm that up as well, just to make it easier. Actually, yeah. we don't need to warm it up because we're not going to uh, put yeast into it this time. So, I'm going to do this very minimal because I know Susanna hasn't got anything. So, I'll show you that we can still make a bread. Okay? So, we're going to do milk and flour. Bit of salt for seasoning. If you've got... Susanna, have you got Nigella seeds? She got nigella seeds? We don't know yet. Okay. 
Okay, the milk's gone in, just in do small it, just, bits. Again, small bits, just to make sure we're getting the dough. So don't dump all the milk in at that once. That was half a cup. That was half a, a mug. So I'm going to add probably a bit more. And again, make a soft dough. Today is about technique for you, Susanna. So you can learn and then you can add stuff to it next time when we're out of the lockdown. How's it going, Kimberly? Are you, are you plodding along with it? Is she online? I think she was cooking. Or is she hiding from me? Okay, so I've got a very soft dough here at Even as well. Okay. Actually, I'll eat the top more milk. Okay. And again, this won't rise, but it will bubble nicely when you're doing the actual dark dough. So I've got a soft dough going. Right, do you want to <laughs> we put the heat, heat down a little bit now? Let's put the heat down. Right, that's bubbling away quite a bit, so we're just going to put the heat down very low on that. So I'm going to peel some garlic next. So that's that's done. So it literally has flour, milk, a bit of salt, a bit of baking powder, and a bit of um, bicarb. That's it. Nothing else in that one. And then I've got one more. Right, I've got that one. So I've got one more to do, which is the chapati, but we're going to go back to that in a second because I need to put some garlic and tomatoes into the pan soon. Okay, so that's the second one out the way, waiting to be used. Right, we don't need them. We don't need those. Okay. Right. What are you doing now? Just do a little tiny, very quickly. Right, okay. Garlic. Let's get the garlic peeled, guys. I, peel I know a few of you have peeled yours. I didn't peel my garlic, so we shall do that next. Just because the onions are starting to brown. Going golden, soft, lovely, really nice. The garlic is going in. Amira, how's it going on your side? Are you plodding along with it? Right, somebody did say to me, I'm covering a lot in an hour, but if I didn't do different elements, you'd be standing me standing there watching me just stirring a pan most of the time. So I am doing extra stuff on purpose, which you can, if you save the video, you can reference at any point you want to then. Um, because I promise you, you won't do that today. I think one person is actually doing it. But if you're not doing it, it's fine. You can always go back to it two, three months later. Okay? Um, because don't forget, this, these videos are mainly for the lockdown period. After that, I might get bored again and have a life again. We shall see. We shall see. Right, in two weeks' time, it's my birthday. So, on that Sunday, so we're not going to do next Sunday because it's Easter Sunday. But we are going to do the week after. Um, but we're going to do a birthday celebration. That's the title of that one. So, we're going to do, hopefully, Bacoras, which I know a few people are after. Um how to maybe make a cake i'm not sure about baking a cake because we can't bake a cake and decorate it I might have a decorated a cake already made i'm working on the cake decoration side bit um and even is anybody up to watching about an hour long video on biryani as well in the background i'm not sure because i'm trying to work out what i would have as my birthday celebration treat and i think biryani would be there goras would be there even samosas so we're going to work out what we can do in that timeline and we will go with seeing what we can come up and maybe a bit of cake decoration. Please put your put your own ideas forward as well, which are reasonable, not unreasonable, please. Sort of thing. So I've done one garlic, that is enough actually. I think I've got the second one out. So So how many cloves? In one pan, I right, one curry. This is gonna feed about eight people, six to eight people. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, say so about ten. If it's a smaller amount, you do like four or five, which is about right. Okay? So we are going to blitz this up in my little mini chopper. Okay, right. So in that goes. Okay. Now I'm going to add one more. 
spice. I forgot to add two things. Hang on. Two extra things are going in today. Right, you can see it's browning nicely, so it's nearly ready, which is great. Right. We're going to add fennel seeds. You ask why? Fennel seeds is a match made in heaven for vegetable curries. So fennel seeds. I've got fennel seeds. Okay, it's one of my old jars, but it doesn't matter. So, but it's love. If you've got it, use it. It's absolutely lovely. How much? About a tablespoon. You've got there. Sprinkle that in. Okay. Background flavour is gorgeous in any vegetable curry. Right. And the other thing, which is a bit of a Jamie Oliver thing, but it does work. See the coriander bunch. If you've got a fresh bunch and you've got the bottom stalks there, I'm going to chop the stalks off. I'm going to wash this now. Chop just the bottom bit and put that in here now and let it cook through. It's got a really bit of you know, bags of flavour. Okay, right, so that can go on here. Okay, so take the end bit off. If you have, if you haven't, don't worry about it because some of the bunches you do get it and some of them you don't, but I was lucky with this one. Put that in now, but do you know what? The flavour of coriander is really strong in this bit. You can smell it. You can really smell it. So put that in now. Okay. Right. The next thing I'm going to do is my tomatoes. Because the onions are nicely browning. So I've got six tomatoes. I'm going to cut them into eight basically to make it easy to cut. Because they have been washed as well. I've already started chopping on one of them. But basically, I've done six salad tomatoes. You can use vine tomatoes for a better flavour. I just had this in, so that's fine. It suits me. So, let's pull up the way. Okay. And a sharp knife. And a good sharp knife. Mr. Chowdhury is very impressed with a sharp knife, aren't you? You can hear that sizzling there. What about those potatoes? They're gonna, I'm going to look at them in a minute. Don't worry. Let's get this going first. Okay, so you can see, oh my god, it smells really good, it smells absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so you've got your garlic, your onions, bay leaf, cloves, ginger, garlic, um, I've added some coriander, stalk, and the tomatoes now. I'm going to put that on a little bit higher gas, because I'm watching it a bit now, okay? Keep an eye on it, you don't want it to burn either, but what you want to do is cover it a little bit, and let the tomatoes start breaking down. I haven't got a lift for this pan, or I couldn't find it the other day, so it will get covered. Right, it's just getting covered for a bit. Okay, just partly, so I've got a little bit off, which is fine. Right, so, as I was going to remind me, as I've reminded, so the potatoes are nice and soft in here. I'm going to drain them. I need a sec. To mush it in. What's going on? I need a bowl. Sorry, I'm short of a bowl. I just realised. Okay. Didn't realise. You need a bowl. She needs a bowl. I forgot about it. Right. So, I'm going to drain the potatoes first thing. So I need to get back to that bowl and put it into this bowl here. Okay. Right, I know it's hot potatoes, but it's the best time to add a few bits to it. So this is for a filling for a brand, I don't forget. I'm going to keep one eye on here. I don't want to burn, don't forget. Right, with it. 
and lower the gas a little bit. Right, the reason why I use fresh tomatoes in the cauliflower curry as opposed to two eight ten is I think it's much nicer with fresh tomatoes. Um, a lot of the chicken curries and that you do tend to need the tomato tin. It gives it more of a sauce. Here you don't need a big saucy flavour because it's a bit more of a dry curry. But it is much nicer with the fresh tomatoes. You can use tomato tin. I, I will say that you can use tomato tin as well if you want to. Okay. Right, so going back to this, so we've got potatoes in here. This is for the paranta filling, okay, for later on. So I'm gonna add, there's about one medium onion chopped up inside there. Right, I'm gonna chop some of this, well, I'm gonna chop the whole of this up and use half of it to go into there and half of the curry and half I'll use okay so half of this I'm gonna put into here okay now it's only a small amount potato this is not a large amount so you only need little bits of spice in this actually to be honest and you can always check the seasoning for this anyway so using a fork give yourself a bit of space okay so i'm just going to use literally a little bit of chili powder maybe tiny bit more what is it chili powder so chili powder first turmeric so just your basic spices again gives it a nice color about a teaspoon of turmeric this is four medium potatoes in here about a teaspoon of curry powder some, let me just get the salt stick there Don't forget, keep one eye on your curry as well. Okay, don't let that burn. So I'm going to use a little bit less salt, maybe a level teaspoon of salt, because you can add salt after. Actually, I'm going to use slightly less even. Maybe less than a level teaspoon. I'm just going to keep stirring my curry, just because I don't want it to stick. to crumble the tomatoes and start to melt quite nicely so that's good so so we've got salt chili powder turmeric and curry powder so i'm going to do my two garam masalas so i've got the shop bought garam masala which is a little bit darker quite earthy okay we've got a good teaspoon of that okay and the homemade one remember i made the whole spice and i ground it up so that's the homemade one so Smells completely different, so that's going in as well. Quite a bit more actually. Good heat teaspoon of that one. Right. These also make lovely potato cakes as well. You know, if you want to just like make them into patties and then just shallow, gently shallow fry, very little oil in the pan and just gently the gorgeous little patties. Um, we do that as well quite a lot in the fasting month. If the potatoes are it is better to cook, do it while it's hot. If it's a little bit cooler, you can get your fingers in, but they're very, very hot at the moment. But I think I will get my fingers in. Okay, right, so, I have got asbestos fingers, I promise you. So, just breaking down the potatoes. Ooh, it's hot. Okay. Use one of the big spoons. That's okay. It's fine. Right, so what I'm going to do is probably get a teaspoon and just taste the seasoning. Actually, that teaspoon's got some. No, I'll get a fresh teaspoon. Kids one. And just taste the seasoning. Mmm. That's quite better. That's quite nice, actually. Mmm. Right. So it's starting to come together. Okay. So I will probably stir this around a bit more afterwards as well. I don't think it needs more salt. I'll check again afterwards once it's cooled down a bit uh, as well. Rihanna has asked, why use yogurt in the naan? Yogurt makes it really nice and yummy. Most naan recipes will have yog plain yogurt in it. So I think a good naan recipe will have it. We've always done it since we were like young anyway, sort of thing, but not 
yogurts go so well, makes it a lovely flat. Well, you know, even there's a there's a there's um a pastry which is just flour and yogurt, and it's amazing. It's equal parts flour, equal part yogurt. We do that for a Turkish flatbread in work, and it's beautiful. So it just it, it's a really really nice way of keeping it as soft. Right, so that's my potato mix, but I said I know not a lot not a lot of you are doing that, which is fine, but I'm gonna put that outside and let it cool down. Wash my hands. We're gonna go back to our cauliflower curry now. Mm. Right. Nice. Okay. This is lovely. Wait a second. Keep it on that. Right. While that's cooking, I'm going to, I did say to whoever's messaged me does know this about the cauliflower. Now, you can... Let me just ask what dough are you making? Which dough am I making? When I'm doing that just now. Two, two types of naan. I've done two types of naan. I'll be doing the chapati one in a minute. We'll see that in a minute. Is that burning? Yeah, that's, which is nice. Okay, so as I've said, it's burning, but you want it to stick a little bit, and that's nice. It gives it that flavour. So, okay, so now I'm going to add my spices to this. I put oil on because I'm going to do a little naughty trick, which my mother-in-law taught, taught me. It's gorgeous. It makes the cauliflower really, really nice. But you don't have to fry the cauliflower, but I am going to. So you've got about... I'll use tablespoons to do that confusion that. So I put some salt in. I can check the salt afterwards. Salt has gone salt. in. Salt. Okay, chili powder again. Probably about. Uh, what was was that plain flour someone was asking? I've used plain flour in the naan. You can use self raising flour as well. Okay, so chili powder. Turmeric. I'm going to go back to the naans and that in a minute. Okay, turmeric. I like my turmeric and turmeric is very good for you. So we do do a bit extra turmeric. Okay, it is starting to stick. So I'm going to put the gas lower. So I've just turned it down, the heat very low, just so I can stir this through. And curry powder. So that's before four basic spices. I'm going to add the shop, the, the shop bought, not the homemade garam masala as well at this point. So probably about a tablespoon. And how many people will this feed? About six to eight, depending on your portion size. This will feed the family. It's a decent amount of um. It's, got, it's a medium-sized cauliflower. It's going to have potatoes in it. And it's had peas in it. Some people are just doing potato peas, some people are doing chicken and cauliflower. People are varying it, I know that, and that's fine. Okay. Peas. Right, so, on low gas. Actually, while that's cooking, while the oil, I'm just waiting for the oil to get hot to put the cauliflower in. So while that's cooking, I'm going to start with the potatoes. I have, I have cheated. I've got the little baby potatoes. They work. Trust me, it works really, really nice in a veg curry. So, and you can use three to four medium potatoes and cut it up to about that size portion. Some of these are tiny in here, so it'll be very, very quick to cook. So they're not even fine. chopped? No, I've not chopped them. Normally, if I get like a bigger one, I might cut it in half. And that's it sort of thing. If you get like something, some of them can be big, big sizes. But I have not done that in this one. So just put the potatoes straight in. Yep. Just the bigger ones I'm just cutting down. So normally you would put the potato and the cauliflower. So now the spices are cooked down a bit. Now it doesn't have to be perfect because don't forget, this is all going to get mushed up with the cauliflower potatoes. So it will blend really, really nicely. So it doesn't have to be a smooth paste or anything like that at all at this point so i put the potatoes in if you're cooking with the chicken put your chicken in now right i'm going to put some peas in now 
I'm just starting the fucking process off because this will be the longest element in everything we're doing. So instead of just doing peas and potato, just put loads a lot more into it, I think so. I'm just doing about that much, like literally about a handful. It's not a lot in my one because I want the cauliflower to be the main element. Right, so I'm being naughty, but it is the nicest cauliflower curry going. Honestly, well worth frying your cauliflower if you can. If you're being healthy, just add it straight in at this point, honestly. Why are you frying it then? Because I think my mother-in-law said it takes away the bitterness, I don't know. But you know what? It's blum and lush. It's really nice. It just takes away. And also it's about the cooking process as well. So I think so. I think it's much nicer. So I'm just going to put a kettle on whilst cooking. Whilst cooking I'm just going to put a kettle on. Just because we will add a little bit of water to this. I'm going to do like a for a minute. So, I don't need that. Oh, I'll leave the jar for the back. Any Cooking's about stirring. Yes. Now, uh, be fried. Salma says chocolate cake, the biryani. Oh, this is my party one. Good idea. We like that. We're getting with that. Party food cook along. Okay. Tin of tomatoes, okay? Yep, absolutely. I did say that. You can use tin tomato, you don't have to use fresh tomato. I just think it goes better with fresh tomatoes in this one. How long are you frying for? Literally just a few, literally, it's not even, it's not even cooking it, it's just taking away, just starting the cooking process. So. Literally about a minute, two minutes, don't even think it's even that. Actually, I think we should do cheesecake. Do you want cheese, but cheesecake, mm, cheesecake is going to be a difficult one to do. Because, Why? you have to let it set, you can't cut it in the pan. Protein bars. Right. Actually, we're going to do a non cook protein bar. No cooking involved. Moving stuff out of the way so I can tidy up your bench as you're going along. So we're doing that now. Okay, I'm just going to put that. I don't need the coriander yet, so I'm just going to put it out of the way for now. Right. Uh, this is quite low calorie as well actually. No, you can make it low calorie because you can just minimalise the oil. It is. All. It is anyway because there's not much meat. Right. Through. Right, so that cauliflower was frying for a minute, two minutes. Yeah. Okay, and the last bit. Go I don't need to fry all these tiny little bits. Just put those straight in the pan. Yeah, Salma just said the uh, tin tomatoes are Bye. more sweeter. Yeah, no, I agree. I just like it in, veg in cauliflower yeah. curry, I just like it like this. Because sugar's added to it, Salma. True, sir. You tell her.
Now, we're going to wait for that cauliflower to go in. And we're going to do chapati flour next. Chapati, which is the last one on my thing to do parantas with. Uh, somebody says I'm, I'm not cooking along because Susanna just told us about you yes, this morning. Yes, that's right. Hi. But thanks for reminding me I need to make a cake for the kid's birthday in a couple of days. Okay, good. What are you making? What have you decided on? What cake? Okay, that's all the cauliflower done. So we should turn that gas off and let it cool down. Right, so in here... Shall I add a pepper? I've got some peppers. Should we do a little bit of pepper into it and give it even more nice yumminess? So I've got potato, cauliflower and a few peas. Um, shall we do a pepper? Yeah, why not? The thing is you can keep adding vegetables as yeah. much as you want. Yep, yeah, that's the whole point. We've got some peppers. Um, I like carrots. You're not getting carrots in that one. Me and the boys like carrots. All right, one red pepper. Half a red pepper, would This adds a bit of colour. If you've got it, use it. If you haven't, don't worry about it. It just gives, again, an extra little bit of flavour. So I've just used half here, just because I remembered. And then cute. And that's it, that's all I'm adding to it. Right, so that's my basic curry. So I'm going to add a bit of water, then cover it for about half an hour and let everything cook down. And in half an hour, we'll work on the flatbreads. Okay, so I did boil the kettle, remember I said? So just add. How much water? It does, not, it does not, you don't cover it, okay? I would say that's probably about 200 mils. It's a lot less, it's not covering it, it's just enough to cook it. We don't. You'll end up with a lot of mush, and you can put more in. It'll just be a lot more mushier. Right. As I said, I haven't got a lid for this pan for some obscure reason. So, I am now just going to oil wrap it. And put it on low gas. Well, I'm going to put it on a... Let's have a look. There. Medium to low gas. So let it I won't put it too low, because I need the potatoes and that to cook. Okay. There you go. So I'm needing low gas, I need it to let it cook as well. So the steam is going to cook it as well? Yeah, the steam is going to cook it. So, let's cover that. So we'll, we'll look at it after about 10-15 minutes. Just keep, just keep one eye on it always, okay? Don't just abandon it. Right, that's that. What's next? Right, so we're going to do chapati flour for this is so you, if you haven't got chapati flour, I did say you can use whole wheat flour and the plain flour, which is what I used to do in Spain a lot of the time. Um, what's the difference between chapati flour? I and think it's just type of, it is a wholemeal flour. It's just it's, I don't know. There's a different sort of texture to it when you're actually cooking with it. Wholemeal flour is a lot harsher, a lot more firmer. This is a lot, this is like medium grain. Whole field, so the mix, it probably has got a mix of plain flour inside it because it's a lot softer to work with. So I think it's already got a combination of plain inside it. But look out for chapati flour, it does, it also has got a very distinct flavour as well. So I'm going to add some water slowly to it. Now you can add a bit of pinch of salt, which I think will actually. What, what is a chapati? It's a flatbread, it's an Indian flatbread that you're going to have the curry with. So I'm just going to add a bit of salt to season it. And some people do add a bit of oil as well, which I think I will do because we've got some to hand. Like the normal basically like that. So and again, but this will make lovely, you'll see later on, I'm gonna make some brantas with it, which Hang is on. really nice. So you're just making a dough by adding yeah. a trickle of water. Slowly, each. slowly until it comes hang on together. Let's have a look. It might be enough here. Let me just check. Sticky dough. Nope, I still need a bit more. Because you want it to be fair, medium to firm, but not too firm either. Okay. 
again this is probably about three four hundred grams of flour over it i think i did two no i did two cups of flour in this two cups of wholemeal flour in this amount so we'll see how we make that better it's coming together now i just want to show you how to do the parameters which is like the yummiest thing ever and if you've got some pickle or a char or anything like that at all best breakfast breakfast best lunch to eat is pranta a filled pranta with some pickle really really nice breakfast armor moon will be used to that in pakistan mars is he still there has he left me no nope, he's still here <gasps> right okay so it's coming together really nicely as a bowl Gonna dip my hand into that, and then the more you need, a lot of people stand there and need it for 10 minutes or so. You don't, you just need to leave it to rest, okay? That's simple. Leave it to rest about 10 minutes, and then you can work with it quite nicely, okay? So that's that one done. All right, we're gonna look back at what we've got before, which is the full of flatbreads. Right, so let's check my curry very quickly. And then we're going to look at the naans. And we get this frying pan out of the way. Let's have a little. Did I get my spice? Okay, stir it really, really nicely. Now I'm going to put it on low. Actually, I'm going to add a tiny bit more water because mine was already sticking a little bit. A tiny bit more water. Yeah. Everyone's invited for lunch. <laughs> I think Sam. I think Sam is rubbing arms. By the way, she's told me so. The back gas has gone on low. Now, now if you haven't got this amazing gadget called a dawa, use a flat frying pan. Okay, this is well seasoned, well used, so it's nice and old, which is fine. So the ones that uh, um, checking, you've put the spices in the curry. Yeah. I was in a, in a bit of a panic. Who was that? Dawn. Okay, Dawn. What spices did you put in? Well, hang on. Not everyone's going to have one of these. No, no, I said a flat frying pan. Flat frying pan. That is fine. The widest one you've got. Now, where do you get these from? A lot of Asian shops, Asian shops will have them. I think even the one in Gibraltar should have it. The guy in Gibraltar should have them in the Asian shop there. He should have it. Uh, basically, it's a frying pan with no size. So, what happened with your spices? Tell me. What was she saying? I think they're all right. I think everyone's all right. Okay, so that's cooking along still. Okay. Right. Okay, so I bought the naan back. Now, we've probably only given it half an hour, to be honest. So, they're not, I'm just going to make one or two for now, just to show you how it's done. So that's not been given enough time yeah, to rise. Yeah, it will rise normally. It does rise normally. Okay. Well, you know what's in it, that's the most important thing. Now, so when you make breads, you need to make sure you've got something to put it on. And keep, we use tea towels to keep them warm inside, so if you can get that ready, even if it's just tea towel on a plate, is fine. Uh, but we've got a wicker basket. That's oh. cool, we like that. Go with that. This is a traditional basket. Now, I have got some, uh, this is olive oil, but you can use any oil and the, pa the pastry brush. This will go on top of the naans after they're cooked, okay? So I'm just going to put that by the side there, ready to go. Now, I've got, now I can feel that that's starting to heat up, which is good. And I'm going to put the bath gas on for a reason, you'll see why in a minute. Just makes it quicker. So this is the first batch of dough. So this had the yeast in it. Hasn't risen as much as like, but it's fine because we haven't we haven't given it a lot of time. So I think so. But I can see that the yeast action is happening because it is bubbles inside it. So I know that there's some yeast action going on. 
So I think I have done it before with this and it will bubble fine. Uh, what, it will work fine. What's the flour on so the table? So this is plain flour. I'm just putting out. If you're using self-raising flour, just put yourself your self-raising flour out. So you get a, a dough ball, probably well bigger than a golf ball, just in it, enough to fit into the palm of your hand and make it into, use a flour because it is a soft dough and make it into some sort of ball relatively, whatever you can do, okay? That's all you've got to do. Okay. Right, flour underneath, but not too much because you don't want the, the ball to cook everything. So I can do without, but if you need flour underneath, put flour underneath and start rolling out. Use your rolling pin and start rolling out. How big? Watch. Now, obviously, look at the size of your pan because if you've got a flying frying pan, we've got quite wide. Mine can go quite big, don't forget. If your frying pan is this small, work with that, okay? So you can't, obviously, you've got to work with the, the lip or the edge of what you've got. Okay. So, now, you either can keep rolling, okay? But traditionally, we will grab it in one hand and flip it over to get any excess flour off and also it makes it bigger and we're used to doing it, I know a lot of people won't be able to do this yet but if you just do that slowly a few times stretch it out like you're doing a pizza dough and then put it on your gas there you go right while that's going on I have one eye don't forget on my curry nice oh. Right, you can see it's starting to bubble, which is nice. Okay, so I'm going to do two of these naans. Then I'll go to the second one. We'll have a look how that's going on. So you can see it bubbles. Shall I do a peshwari naan? No. Does anybody want a peshwari naan? No. Yes. Who wants a peshwari naan? Salma, do you add spices to curry or did I miss that? Yes, I did add spices to curry. All spices were added to curry. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Right, let's do a peshwari naan. Right, what we eat the spices separate. <laughs> Mix in a bowl and sprinkle at the end. Right, you can see it bubbling up nicely. So it's worked, even the yeast is actually working quite nicely there. Right, so be brave, use your hands. If you're going to use um, a fish slice, use a fish slice if, you, if you're not that brave. Get a fish slice underneath it. But we do use our fingers. Go for it. Okay, turn it over. Browning nicely. So while that's even cooking, I'm just doing the next dough ball because I think we're just so used to it. But if you want to just concentrate on that, do that. That's absolutely fine. Okay. Right, so now, and again, I'm going to turn it over. Use your fish, like fish slice if you need to. Okay. <laughs> now, I know a lot of places in Spain won't have gas cooker, am I right? Some people are not using gas cooker. If you're not using gas cooker, get a clean tea towel and push it down, okay? Just to let that final bit cook through. Make sure it's all, you just look around, make sure it's all cooked. Because some people won't have, we, we didn't have a gas cooker in Spain, so I know you won't have it. Or well, very, very few people will have it. So do it that way. Okay, if you do have a good gas cooker and you're brave, throw the naan on the gas cooker. That's why I put that pan there. Okay, if you're brave, if you're not, don't worry about it. What does that do? It gives it a lovely flame flavour. You get that nice, you can see all the crisscrosses of the flame going on. But as I said, if you're not brave enough, just use the tea towel, press it down. Okay, so that's done. So what I'm going to do is... Now, brush it, just literally lightly brush it with oil and cover it. One done. Okay? So we'll do the second. We're going to do two of each, no more than two. And later on, I can do the rest later on. So this is the second one. Again, it's a dough ball. You can make your dough ball big or small. However, don't forget, knives can be as big or small as you want them. Make mini ones, big ones, whatever. And whatever shape it does not have to be oval it doesn't have to be right it can be anything just work with it don't forget i've been doing this for years if you've got a triangle one go with it it still tastes the same right don't forget the flipping over 
one hand to one hand. All we're trying to do is just drop any excess flour, okay? This is going to be quite a high flame and I can see a lot of smoke coming off it, so I'm just going to lower it. Don't forget, keep an eye on your frying pan. It's just work with how, what you've got, your frying pan, your tea towel, your hands, whichever fish like. So I've thrown it on there, just throw it on, stretch it out, okay? Cook it back on. So that's two of those ones, because I keep them up warm. So I'm, I'm flicking that over, I'm stirring my curry. It's actually nearly done. Nice. So the back gas so, was on to keep yeah. this thing warm. Yeah. Whilst the cooking it on the flame. Because you did a lot quicker pace, so I'll have the next one on and stuff like that sort of thing. So this is coming along quite nicely. I'm not adding enough water to it. Don't forget, you can add water, but I like the cauliflower drier, so that's fine. Right, you can see it bubbling really nicely, so I'm going to flick it over. Right, that's the second one. So, so these are nans with yogurt. These are nans with the yogurt with and egg and yeast. This is the, this is like the full works nan. This is the really yummy nan that goes in the freezer, and you can have like two months later and taste exactly the same. Freeze. So I'm just going to clean film that, and I'll do my nan's time. I'll do the rest of them. I don't need to do them all together right now. Okay. Right. Now, I've got the next bowl. Okay, oh. let's finish this naan off first. So don't forget, tea towel, if you haven't got a gas cooker, press it down, press it down, press it down, just to make sure it's all fully cooked. Okay? And that is actually cooked, but we just throw it onto the flame just to give a bit of an extra element. Okay? Press it down, press it down. Press it down, press it down. And even look, you can see the bubbles are rising because I'm pressing it down. Okay. Right, and I won't put it in the flame, but just to show you that that is actually done. So that can go there. And then that, with a bit, is done. Okay. So that's two... What oil is that? That was olive oil in this one, but you can use sunflower oil or vegetable oil. Anything. Right, so I'm just going to lower the flame while we're talking. Okay. So this is just the milk flour and baking powder and stuff inside this one. This is a very simple one. Let's see how this goes. It hasn't got nigel seed in it, just to show you. And again, you can see there's a reaction there because it's got all this stretch work. I can see it's going to be nice and bubbly as well. Hopefully it should be. There's no yeast in it. No, well the baking powder should be working as well. So you can't do it without. And also if you're vegan, you can just use um, oat milk and stuff like that. We have got, I've got a few vegan friends. So, you know, you can make it how you wish. You can use um, this coconut milk as well. There's vegan yogurts. There's loads of different variations. So you can chop and change it around. So again, so this is Susanna. I know who's really didn't get a lot of ingredients, but that's just your dough, which is what you should have. Rolling it out. This looks a lot stickier, so you need more flour. Yeah. You could put chili flakes in this. You could put whatever you want to in there, let's try. Okay. Chili flakes. You can put garlic in it if you want. Ooh. Okay, right, ready? So again, we're going to tap it side to side. Again, right hand to left hand. You're just dusting off any flour as much as you can. Stretch it out, any shape you want, put it on the pan. Let's see if we get any bubbles or not. I can see a few rising already, quite nicely. And there you go, you should be getting a few little bubbles going on. Okay, and then we will still let that cook a little bit more because the gas was lower. I'll have my second one ready. So then we'll do two of each. Yes. That seems to be cooking quicker really than nice, the other one. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to flick it over, okay? That sounded heavier. No, it's okay, it's nice. Nice and light, feels very soft. Right, don't forget I'm getting my second dough ball ready. Okay. This looks a lot thicker. 
that's because of the baking powder well i made it rise which is fine but it's still soft it will be very soft now you again Susanna, if you've got an electric cooker turn it over get your tea towel right onto it and give it that but i'm going to throw it on the cooker to give it a nice flame look you can get these sort of big huge spoons to take them off um, or tongs if you have if you're too worried about that but it just gives it a really nice flame look okay right so that's going off because that's done so that's your first of that one and we'll do a second one we'll get them to do the test tasting test soon no. on the difference I'm actually looking forward to the chapat and the parantas. I think that's like the most interesting one myself. Okay, right. So two, it's a two of each, okay? So two of the non-yeast, just baking powder and that. Okay, doesn't matter, look, it's got a hole, doesn't matter. It makes it all fun, it makes it interesting. Okay, there you go. Right, so while that's going on, give my pan a stir. Get right in there. It's not done yet because it tastes really good. But it's looking really good and smelling really nice now. Okay. The curry will be done when the potatoes are cooked, which they're not at the moment, and the, the cauliflower has crumbled down a bit. I think so. Keep an eye on the front one as well. If you need to add water to it a little bit, add water to your curry. Don't worry about it. I'm not adding it, but you can. Okay. Right, that's the second one. Batman is busy. Hmm? Batman is busy. Somebody says, can we see Batman? No. <laughs> He's I'll get it, I'll get it. I'll get the phone off him now, but I've got a minute, people. Wait a second. Who's that? Is that Kim? Okay. Right, let me just do this now and then we'll get the we'll get the Batman to say hi. No. Yes. Stop it you. Right, I said if you can't haven't got the brain to do that, just use a tea towel and press it down. It just gives it a nice smokiness to it. Okay? Can you use butter? Uh, you can. Yeah, of course you can. You can use whatever you want to, yeah. You want to make it even more richer? Why not? Right. Okay. Come on, mister. Uh, uh, well. Do I just have to flick the camera? Why don't you just flick the camera over? Hang on. I'll let you look at the naan bread while he is getting ready to say hello. I'm looking at Hi! He's looking at naan breads. Denies all knowledge. Mm. Batman does have a beard. <laughs> okay, right. See so you still there. Say hello to the kids. Who? <laughs> what's that? Zeb's lagging behind. I know. I know. I know, Mars. I know. Okay. Right. We're gonna do some chapats and prantas, and then we should be nearly done now. Okay. Here he is. Flick it back. Look at that camera. Right. So chatties, it's a little bit more like wholemeal. One, don't forget. Uh, Fozzie, make two cheesecakes. The one I did earlier. Right? I don't know. Shyster. Okay. We don't know. We'll discuss that later, Shyster. Right. So this is your traditional chapati. Okay. We'll just do one chapati, and then we'll do a paranta. One chapati, one paranta, and one filled. Or two filled. Okay, so this is chapati bread, which is what most people from the subcontinent would tend to eat. Naan's is more of a treat for us, I think, actually, more than anything else. Hot no, that's fine. So I'm saying the pan's too hot, but that's it works on a no, good that plate. Back one. It needs to be. You don't need it. Yes, you do, because it keeps it over hot. So this is thin. This is a lot thinner. So just for you to watch while we're finishing off the curry. This is a lot thinner. Okay. It's very thin. Okay. So and again, you just just it's very traditional. You just off the flour. Okay. Oh, off the edge there, that's fine. Bring it back on. You know? Okay, that's that one. 
Right, I do need butter. Sugar. Butter. Right. Just take with that. I can I'll use flora. Right. So you just turn that over. Now, so that's a chapati flour on the gas. We're gonna do a swirly planter. Now this is a bit of technique, this one. So a plain planter first, which involves a bit of technique and a bit of getting used to. Okay, so you would roll out, so it's slightly smaller bowl than I did that one. Right. Roll out to a medium size. So it's like a double roll this one's gonna be. But it's gonna be a butterier version. Okay, right, so we've got that there. Keeping one eye on my chapati. Okay. Now I'm gonna use, you can use butter. I forgot to get the butter out, so I was gonna use butter. Um, lobs of butter on here, but I'm just using flora spread because it's softer. Okay. Or you can brush it with oil if you're doing a vegan version. Okay, so if you do that, this is interesting. Right, okay. Hold on. Watching that. Okay. Let's put the chapati onto the flame. That is to be expected for That's it to it does work. balloon up. It's very normal. Okay, so that's one chapati, which is like just the basic, what we're, it's everyday food for us. Normally it's one chapati per person. Guys tend to eat two or three, women tend to eat one, one and a half. It's just, you just got to work it out what's, what's best for you lot. But this is my chapati done. Right. Let's go back. So I was rolling out, so you've got butter in this one, with the whole, with the chapati one. We're just going to roll it out to a sausage. So it's long. Then we're going to re-roll it out. So it's a bit trickier this one, but it's so good. Right. And push it down. Push it all down. And then get... So this will take a bit of experience, a bit of time for you to get this one, okay? Trust me, you won't get it straight away. And then you just make, so this is a buttered version of chapati called pranta. Okay. Right, then on top of that, we just put a little bit of butter on there, but you don't have to, just to start the oil bit on there, or you can brush some oil on it. Some people put onions inside it. Now I'm going to do a filled one now. So you can do a filled one now. Filled with what? I'm going to do filled with the taste mix that I did. So for the filled one, because I know somebody who said they've got, they are going to do a filled one. You make two equal size dough balls, but slight golf ball size. So. So that's a little larger than a golf ball. I'm going to make it slightly smaller. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Right, we're just going to go back to this one. We'll turn it over. Right, this is the naughty treat, by the way. So we do put a bit of butter on both sides. Use a bit of butter, or you can brush oil on it if you're not brave enough to put the butter directly on it. Just get the brush of the oil if you want to, and just do that. This is the high calorie version. This is the high calorie and blooming lovely version. Okay, I'm going to flick it over, and again, I'm going to do exactly the same. Or I said you can brush it with oil. Okay. Again, use a flat um, fish knife, fish slice if you need to. Okay, so let that just cook on each side. Right, so these smaller, this is the smaller one. Okay. Make them like a medium size one, well, equal. So I'm just move that apart and move that apart. Again, we're just going to turn that over. That's the front, plain fronter, that is. I'm so looking forward to my lunch. Oh my god, I'm really looking forward, very excited. Fronter and cauliflower curry for the neck. Fronter does beat the naan hands down, by the way, once you get used to making it. It does. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it does. Right, so I've done roughly equal size. Well, so let's just concentrate on that. This does obviously not go on the flame. This is, once it's done, it's done. Sort of thing. So you just turn it over, check both sides are cooked. Which they are. 
You'll see like raw bits, maybe like tight around the edges and stuff like that. Just keep an eye out for it. But this, once it's cooled down, I will try to break this up. I'm going to flick it straight onto there because it's hot. Okay. I'm going to lower the temperature down because it's smoking. Turn it back on off now. Don't need that now. It's curry on. Okay. Curry is okay. Let's have a little stir that. Oh, so good. Can you see the curry? How good is that? That is literally nearly there. I think that's more or less there actually. But let's keep that cooking while we are doing it. I think probably the potato might need a little bit longer still. Yeah. Okay. So basically that curry is literally just needs to finish off in about. Once the potatoes is done, then that will be done. But I said I will finish it off sooner. Right, we're gonna go back. I don't know if you remember the potato mix we did do. Let me remember that. So now I'm gonna just check the seasoning. It's good. Need a bit more salt. Actually, no, no. Don't worry, I've got the salt there. So on one layer, you grab a handful and you put it down. I'm also gonna do a surprise one. Watch. Watch. Right, so that. Now we would need Oh, what's actually? Sorry, kids. Scared everybody. Put a bit of butter around the side just to make that sure. That is literally butter fingers. Behave. <laughs> so you're making a pasty. See you later. See you later. I'm wash my hands. It's a pasty. Sort of. Right. Now, if you can, lift it up. Okay, and then just gently should be able to flatten it down there. Okay, that's all you need to do with that. I'm going to put it straight on the gas, flick it a little bit because I can. If you can't, just put it on. So it's like a, yeah, I feel it's pastry pastry, isn't it? Right, so that's you, a potato. What if you filled it with the curry that you're making? No, you can, right, okay, so. There's about three or four good alternatives. So you've got potato one there. You could have, when that, if that cools down, uh, especially cauliflower, more of the cauliflower, mush it up. The cauliflower inside a frantic is amazing. Right, let it cool down and put that inside it. And um, actually, which is what I, was, I have been cooling down, is this is a kebab mix I had in the freezer. So I'm gonna put, make a, keep, so this is chicken mince. So I'm gonna actually make one extra pranta because I want it for my lunch. And that's going to be a, a, a kebab, basically a kebab pranta, a mince pranta. So again, two balls. Um, and spinach, spinach and um, curry without the potato, take a lot of potatoes out. Um, spinach and pranta is amazing as well. They're two really, really good prantas. Four cauliflower, potato, spinach, and mince, the four main ones, I would say, that we tend to do. Right, if you turn this over. So. It needs butter because that's the naughty bit of a branta is the butter. Okay. I'm going to turn it over. I'm just going to put it into there. While it's raw, it's better. This is a branta. When you see on the menu in the restaurants and you have to filled brantas, this is what you're going to get. And I said, I'm going, this is the potato one. I am going to do a chemo one in one minute as well. And don't forget, use a fish slice if you're not brave. Okay. Right, so let's roll these out exactly the same. We're nearly done now. Last one. This is the last element I'm going to do, and then we'll just finish off the curry. So hopefully, I think we have covered a lot today. I know we're going to cover, we have covered a lot um, and whizzed through a lot. So you probably will have to go back through the video to find bits that you didn't understand. Go away. <laughs> um, or just message me. Okay. Right. So. I did say I defrosted some kebab mix. Let's 
see if it's, yeah, has defrosted. So I'm simply going to put that inside there. This has got onions, coriander, peppers, spices, all my spices are in here. Basically, you could fill it with anything you want. You can fill it out with absolutely anything you want to. Okay, so this is like a pastry. So, I'm going to flick it over. Okay, it's getting there. So I'm going to lift that up, put some flour underneath it, and roll it flat. I know I'm making it look actually easier than, than it actually is. It is quite a difficult thing, but once you do a few of these, they are well worth it. There's a lovely, you know what, it's nice cut up into quarters. I've got some pickle ready and they are lovely. And the edges are big, thick and crusty. You can use the edges for the curry and just munch the filling in the middle. It's lovely. That's cooked now, this one. So one pranta, so plain pranta, potato pranta, and now we've got the Kima, Kima pranta. That's fine. Right. Let's get back to this. So I'm going to finish this curry off now. Just going to wash my clothes. Okay. I think it's ready. Yeah, I'm going to add some. Right, do you remember what I did last time? I added the whole freshly ground garam masala to it. Right at the very end of the curry, a good tablespoon. It's lovely. It just flames it all off, and that's fine. And I have some. What about that chart? No, no. We're going to save that with the And my fresh coriander. You can have the frozen one, and that's all you've got. That's absolutely fine as well. Don't forget, don't, keep it on cooking on low gas until and add water if you need to until the potatoes are cooked, okay? Now, the last thing you need to do before you serve it out would always be check your seasoning. Hang on, I need to flick this over. I'll bust that in a second. That's good. Oh. Love a curry. Right, that's good. Right, so leave that. Okay, and you put the butter on this before it dries out. So, I'm just going to get some plates to put all the naans out. Don't forget, I've been doing parantas for years, so don't, you know, just take one stage at a time. I just start with the chapati and a plain paranta first, then go for the filled ones, okay? I was just giving you advanced lessons early. I just tried to keep it all busy, that's all. Yeah. Okay. Right, don't, you don't need to serve the bay leaf and stuff like that, so put that to one side. So, we've got... Right, so let's see what we've made. Let's have a look. Get some dishes out so we can see what we've made. Uh, the, res the restaurant will be open in 15 minutes. <laughs> right, so. Okay. And then two 
wait for the char and then we're done. Right, it should all be coming together now, hopefully, whoever's cooked along. How's it been? Right, I'm going to flick that onto there. Okay. Batman's going to have to put his mask on in a minute and say hello. Bye. Right, okay, so what have we got? We've got cauliflower potato curry. We've got traditional naan with the yogurt and the egg and the yeast. We've got a plain naan, which has just got um, just milk and baking powder. We've got, oh, we've got chapati, plain pranta, filled pranta with potato. And this one is with keema inside it. And the best way to eat a branta is obviously with a char. Right, Batman has sat himself down, ready, thinking he's getting fed right now, which he's not. <laughs> I'm ready to tuck in. Are you ready to say bye, everybody? Bye, bye everybody. Bye. We'll see you in a couple of weeks' time on birthday celebrations. How to turn it off? I don't know how to turn it off.